A special welcome was set up to greet the marquee names and key personalities of the Iron Man race as they landed on Camarines Sur's airport two days prior to the actual event. When we got off the plane here in, in Camp Sur, when we had the, the dancers and the marching band outside the airplane welcoming us, that was, that was unbelievable. It was, it was, yeah, I mean, it was very, very heartfelt to, to see that, that we get such a good welcome and, and we're looked after so well here in, in the Philippines. The little program was perceived as an auspicious sign of things to come. A lot of energy has already been spent as the competitors make the U-turn to complete the second half of the loop. Now, countless hours of training and years of valuable experience are paying off. I do a lot of ocean swimming, so you know I'm real comfortable with the water. I do a lot of ocean swim races where, yeah, that, that's one of my secrets is doing the ocean swim races and getting just really comfortable in, I guess you could say, dangerous ocean conditions. So for me, I, I, I sometimes I like to have, you know, kind of a crazy conditions with currents, and I actually like that because I am so used to it. Right now, Tim Marr is behind Cameron Brown, Chris McCormack, Pete Jacobs, and Terenzo Bozzoni. Bozzoni and Jacobs are in a tug of war for the lead, with the Kiwi hotshot having a slight edge as they approach the second part of the swim course. On the transfer to the second swim, Bozzone emerged first from the big lake, but decided to stay alongside Pete Jacobs, who's considered the top swimmer in the fold. Strategies are now surfacing, and the competition has shifted into higher gear as the pros tackle the CWC lake to finish off the remainder of the swim course. The unique feature of this race is obviously the swim course back here on the uh, our wakeboarding course. And that's going to be real interesting for the athletes and real exciting for spectators. I guess the race will evolve in, in, in one of two ways. Either it's going to be very, uh, very controlled on the bike and in half of the run the group will stay together because uh, of the heat. Or there might be uh, Pete Jacobs who's a good swimmer. Uh, I think I could try and stay on his feet might get a bit of a gap in the swim and, and who knows, maybe, maybe get away on the bike. The Filipino elite athletes and some of the age groupers are now ready to join the pros on the second swim. They're about to experience the ungentle conditions that even the professionals endure. Gina Kerr of the United States leads all women, while Pete Jacobs has taken over for the men. Um. You know, it's different things. I think you start out just, uh, you know, like anyone else. I mean, you're you kind of have some anxiety because you have that's where your self doubt can come in, um, and so you kind of have to work through that. Because I'm not the strongest swimmer, I have to bike as hard as I can and, and make up that time. Um, because some of the strong swimmers are also strong runners, so I don't want to give them any head start onto the run. So, but really, just go as hard as I can. A few days before the event, a press conference was held at the CWC's Villa del Rey. Different media factions were on the dot as all the notable names responsible for the special event were in the hand. world who have come here to Kamsur for Cobra Energy Drink 70.3 Philippine. Um, members of the press, welcome. Welcome to the inaugural Cobra Energy Drink Ironman 70.3 Philippines. 
Well, first of all, it puts the Philippines on the triathlon map. Uh, regionally and I think internationally. We have over 20 countries represented here this weekend. So next year I'm hoping we're going to have even more. Uh, certainly for CWC, it's, it's a great opportunity to diversify CWC out of wakeboarding and show that it can really be the extreme sports capital uh, in the country that Governor Villafuerta aspires it to be. Back at the race, some have yet to make it to the second swim, while Pete Jacobs proved to be the fastest swimmer in the competition. The Australian led the first wave of competitors out of the water with a time of 24 minutes and 42 seconds. Right behind him are Terenzo Bozzone, Chris McCormack, Cameron Brown, and Timothy Barr. All are still very much in contention. Me personally, I. I'm very, very hard on myself. I expect a lot from myself, and uh, quitting is just not part of my vocabulary. It looks like it's going to be a, what I call a tough man's race. Who's toughest? Things are bound to get tougher as they sprint for their bikes. Gina Kerr and Bree Wee continue to rule the women's side. The two Americans seem to have found the perfect way to approach the race. You know, the only, there's lots of competitors out there, but the only person I really have to race is myself. I, I can't control what the other girls are doing. I can't control their speed or their heads. I only can focus on myself. So I try to handle, you know, everything as best as I can all on my own. You know, I'm here to make a paycheck, so <laughs> I'm uh, going for it. And, you know, mindset is to do the best that I absolutely can. And, you know, just be in control of what I can control, which is myself. The participants' objectives for competing are diverse. Some, like the professionals, are out there to win, while others treat the competition simply as a contest within oneself. The personal goals may vary, but the one thing that should stay the same is the hard work every triathlete always puts in. There's no shortcuts to success. You have to put in time, you have to put in hard work. It doesn't mean you have to train hard every day. You know, there's, there's got to be easy days where you're recovering and hard days where, where you really push it. I'm just going to have fun. I mean, Initially, I had a time goal for myself, but now I won't even think of the time. I'm just gonna go to the starting line and enjoy every moment of this. More Iron Man action still to come. <laughs>